Hi, yeah, I'm Nick Taylor. Um, I'm going to try and shoot a video in which I do some art and stuff. I mean, I, I kind of started off trying to make a video to demonstrate these things, which are golden ratio calipers that I make. Um, but there's a blank wall, and if I if I just sort of sit in front of a blank wall with a video going, it looks like I'm in some sort of prison cell or something. So I thought I'd. Um, make a video of me doing some art which also demonstrates how these things are used um, and because I've only got one of these everything's kind of live <laughs> I don't get a second go at this um, so that's going to be full of me not being able to string a sentence together and just sort of talking gibberish and swearing and making cock-ups and, and, and all that kind of thing um, so there you go um, right scene one piece of wood. It's actually MDF um, with a sort of wooden thing that I sort of put at the back so it sticks out a bit. Um, God, it's a bit lucky. I've forgotten my pencil. I've just sort of be back in a bit. Found it. <laughs> um, this is probably going to be shot over several days as well so there'll be changing lighting conditions and um, so on, so everything, it's, it's not going to be very professional. Um, anyway, picture. Um, what we're going to try and do is have a great big sun thing or a flower or just a massive sort of round thing about, about so big I guess. Um, and to make it look even bigger than it actually is, what I'm going to do is draw a little person or something down here because um, I quite like drawing little people, um, like kind of lolly, it's like stick men kind of thing, like a little sort of lollipop thing, um, which is sort of the the small, the most indivisible unit of anthropomorphism, anthropomorphizability. Um, so it's the, the sort of smallest thing that you can say, oh that looks like a little person. Because <laughs> um, I, I basically think everything is a little person. Um, yeah, so there you go. Um, so, these golden ratio calipers, they're kind of tools for measuring artistic balance um, and they are good for creativity and they ain't that good for analysis so um, if you're making something then they provide kind of useful centres of gravity but if you're analysing something after the fact they probably ain't going to work because most artists um, like me wing it um, but they provide confidence and they give you know, a second opinion and so on so, these are not big enough to measure an entire thing. So what we need to do is have about halfway, half and half, near enough. So, um, what I want to do is, um, I, I, the little person needs some, the little person needs some sort of hills or whatever to stand on. <laughs> they can't, little people just can't be floating in mid-air, it doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have like three kind of gentle rolling hills or waves or sort of just flowy shapes at the bottom here. Um, and so great big round thing there. Um, so and I like the flowy shape things, like there's going to be three of them. I'd like them to start kind of golden ratio here, even though they're going to be a bit flat on that. So if that's halfway, um, halfway, they're probably the first one. Actually, I should start there, I guess. I, I was thinking two of those, two of those there. Yeah. So if I make a mark there and make, uh, I've sort of lost the plot here already. I think um, another one. So yeah, I mean that sort of starts quite high, but it's going to be lower than that. It's going to sort of swoop down because um, I don't want the the ground, I don't don't want the land, but to be you know a golden ratio, you know that to that of the whole thing, because that'll make too much ground. I want a lot of sky. It's good to have a lot of sky. Um, so what I can do is make how are we going to go like that? Do. I usually have things flat, I don't usually have things up on the wall, so I'm not used to drawing kind of upright, but it's going to be something like something like that for hill one. Um, hill two, um, quite like 
What have we got? That. Um, that. I like quite like one sort of coming up, sort of starting at the same place and going like that, so it sort of goes like so. And another one which goes like that. Um, so, kind of golden ratio there, is that wide enough? I like it to be golden ratio, so it's there, then probably, probably, I think actually about half that more than. Um, about there, so. so another one which goes like so, yeah, something like that. That's incredibly badly drawn already. Um, okay, I don't know if I like that or not. Um, I think this needs to be lower, I think that needs to be like that. Yeah, that's better. So I need to go and get a, a rubber or something, you know, not a rubber, rock, an eraser. <laughs> there we are. An eraser. <clears throat> so, roll up. Okay, I'm back again. This is New Zealand in the summer out there and it's seriously hot. I should open the doors. That's better. Bit cooler. It's really hot. Um, I might do this tomorrow when it's kind of cool down a bit. The red dot, I'm going to have a, a gentle red glow here, hopefully. And the best way of doing that is to get some red paint. A dot of red paint. And start about there. Might need a bit of water. I don't have any water. So I will use beer. <laughs> Beer. It's almost like water, but not quite. There we are. That's far bigger and brighter than I actually meant. Um, so it starts to go wrong already. It's already going wrong. Um, a bit of white and a bit of black. And so if I go. Okay, well I'm not happy with that. <laughs> it hasn't worked out how I thought it was going to. That pink thing's too rowdy. Um, 
Yeah. Alright, well, deal with it all later. Okay, um, next day, give or take a day or three, um, all sorts of things went wrong. Um, these curves aren't tight enough, um, they need to be like Bezier curves with like one or two handles or like quadratic equations or something like that. That bit's not high enough. Um, that seemed like a nice idea at the time, but I've got to get rid of it, it's crap. <laughs> um, I'm not used to painting on a wall, I'm used to painting flat, so all the lines are a bit kind of wobblier than they should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repaint those. I think I'm also going to make a big white shape, like using exactly the same paint as the backdrops made out of. So it's it's more a kind of matter of texture than than colour, if you know what I mean. Um, so I mean, hopefully the only difference you'll see is that the brush marks are going in the other direction. Um, so there you go. Let's have a go at that. Eh? <laughs> So a big white thing, um, might be good just to, because this isn't, it might be good to sort of find where the midpoint is, so that's the middle there, that's the middle there, so, what do you reckon, started at about, started white about there, um, and I want that to sort of, be a, so it probably just needs to drop by a little part a little bit actually. Um, yeah. So if that's probably could do because it's a lighter colour, it's got less gravity, so you can have a lot more of it. So gentle swooping line going to there. What do you reckon? Try that, eh? But I'm going to put it down here because I can't, I can't draw straight lines standing up right. Right, here we go. Okay, back again. Um, this camera that I'm using is absolutely crap and it often just stops recording for no reason. So, I've just painted a load of stuff and it hasn't been working, which makes me want to kill it. Um, but if I do that, then I won't be able to record anything else, um, so there you go. So, I just sort of evened it out a bit more, and I think it, they all sort of work together. Because, I mean, they're supposed to be background, they're not supposed to be foreground. So, there you go. Um, I was thinking of getting a spray can and going whoosh, whoosh, and making kind of vapour trail type shapes and getting like a silver sharpie and something similar. But at the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking that um, the whole thing should be monochrome. And if I got bored with that, then I could just make a great big red thing over the top. Um, and my imagination is bored with the monochrome already. <laughs> so I'm going to make a great big red thing over the top. Usually I'd sort of try and go for red and sort of like a yellow red sort of fade or whatever. Um, but I don't have any yellow paint, so I'm not going to do that. And instead, I've got various types of kind of day glow, and I've got no idea what that's going to look like. Um, so, there you go. Anywho, big red thing, big red circle. Um, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just use this as a kind of compass, um, and go like so. Make a really light scratch. All the way around. The problem with making a really light scratch rather than drawing with a pencil is you can't get an eraser and rub that out later. But anyway, that's how big the, the thing is going to be. So let's get on with it, eh? What have we got? Um, oh, yeah, I made one of these, which is a, a sort of spongy thing with a, with a sort of stick sticking out of it so you can like lean against. Um, the thing, because if I put the, the painting down there while I'm doing it, you can't see what I'm doing. This would better be recording, if it's not, I'm going to smash this camera into a thousand pieces. Yeah, it is working. It's alright, it's working. <laughs> Okie dokes. Um, everything starts with an edge. How do we do this? Um,
There's a story I think about um, Sandro Botticelli or Leonardo or somebody like that um, who when they were really young needed to do some sort of art exam or aptitude test or something for an apprenticeship um, and instead of um, drawing a, a painting or doing a drawing like any of the other kids um, uh, what he did is he just drew a perfect circle in freehand I'm not that guy How do you not spawn bloody furry lines already? It's annoying Well that is take one I guess, um, the day glow didn't really show up at all, um, good enough for me though, I might try putting something over the top of it, um, I'll have one more go, I should probably wait till it dries and then try and, well this isn't even day glow, this is an old purple colour, um, don't know, I think I might go back to black actually. I know where you are with black. <laughs> what do you reckon? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe. Dunno, mate, dunno if I like that or not. Be careful with this, eh, because if you overdo it, you'll cock it up. quite like that, I think. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Brilliant, I've done something right for one. I've finally done something right. So what I was planning on doing next is sort of having a black blob there and sort of radiating kind of, what do you call them, stamens? Flower kind of bits. Um, which I'm going to have to do after it dries anyway, and I don't know if I can do that without cocking the whole thing up, so I'm a little bit reluctant in a way. Um, well, I would quite, quite like to have a bit more going on. Anyway, that's it for today. Alright, back again. Um, well, what I'm going to try and do, which is probably going to screw up the whole thing, um, is I'm going to try and draw some flower details, so there's a sort of a black blob there and kind of radiating stamens or whatever you call them which are straight lines and I can't draw straight lines um, so um, what I'm going to try and do, I've, I've craftily rubber banded a pencil to the arm of this um, I think the, the stamens are all different lengths that's not going to work is it? that's not the right angle so much for that the stamens are all different lengths, but um, they're going to average around the golden ratio of the entire width of the thing. Flower. I don't know if I can draw on this stuff, to be honest. Oh, why is everything so fiddly? There we go. So. Like so, um, which I can almost see. <laughs> Fortunately, um, I won't have to then sort of erase that later because it actually blends in. Um, okay, so that's the the average length. I mean, they'll kind of average about that kind of um, yeah. Um, 
I don't really speak in proper sentences, I don't know if you've noticed that. <laughs> um, it's because I don't think in proper sentences. Anyway, um, so the middle blob will probably... Um, well that's just about dry. Um, I'm going to try using a ruler to draw straight lines. Um, that's what normal people do, isn't it? Um, but I don't know if you can use it to paint straight lines. I'll give it a try, eh? You can, but it's only straight on one side. Not bad, near enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think what I'm probably going to have to do is just um, do all this stuff and then just hit it with a spray can or just something to to sort of decartoonify it. Near enough, eh? First fuck up. <laughs> if you listen really, really carefully, you can hear the subtle jingling tune, which is the alarm on my cell phone telling me to take the rubbish out. Tuesday's rubbish day. <laughs> you yeah, alright? It's a bit cartoony, eh? I might go get the jingling thing. <laughs> might put another black thing here, eh? Which is extremely risky. And I probably shouldn't try. Okay, that, um, hang on, just, yeah, what I was saying, um, is, uh, I don't like that, it looks a bit cartoony, um, so what I'm going to try and do is possibly, um, hit it with a spray can going that way, and possibly that way as well, um, and I could wind up wrecking the whole thing, um, I have to do the spray can thing outside, um, because otherwise I fill the house with spray can fumes. No, it's too cartoony, I've, I've, I've bundled it. <laughs> I need to wash the paintbrushes. Okay, well that didn't really work either. Um, I used too much black. <laughs> um, and I don't know if I can paint over, I don't know if I can paint over that. Um, what I'm going to try and do is paint over these with enamel paint so it's so it's still black but it just sort of pops out a bit more. Man I've got to do something about this camera it's absolutely shit it stopped working again I've no idea how much of that got done. Fucking unbelievable. <laughs> but that's um <laughs> I think it's alright actually. I 
I'm quite tempted just to put sort of lines going like silver lines or something just sort of swooping that away but if I do that I'll never be able to get rid of them I screwed that up. Nice one. Nice one, reality. <laughs> yep, all good. So there you go. It's about about 20 layers of mistakes. The most important bit is to draw little people. Um, I might try and use a sharpie for that because they're quite small. Um, no, that doesn't work. Um, it's a sharpie, but it, it's sort of it's like a paint sharpie, but it's so hard that it scratches the paint underneath. Um, All right, back again. Um, while you're away, I did two little red dots there, um, which make all the difference. You need red dots. And I drew a little, another little one down here, and I'm going to try and put a, a red dot there as well. I'm severely hampered by my lack of um, you know, talent. Like that. Used to a pencil eraser. Okay. Um, scrap yarn together. <sighs> okay, stop. Stop adding to stuff. How does that look, do you reckon? Well, it looks like something. Okay. Okay, well, that is kind of that, I think. Um, I'm about 60% happy with it. Uh, I think later on I'll probably need to varnish that because it actually looks quite good shiny. Um, so, what I'll do is I'll just let it sit for a couple of days, let it gel. Um, and I might add other stuff to it, but if I do add other stuff to it, I'm not painting anymore. I think I'll probably, like, I don't know, laser cut something and put it there, or... Um. All right, back again. Um, several days have gone by, um, time enough for it to kind of gel, to see if there's anything that needs sort of changing or updating or subtracting. Um, oh, I don't think there is. I really like it the way it is. Um, I said about 60% before, I'd say about 90 now. Um, there's a couple of things I bungled. Like I tried to make those smudgy, but like it's smudgy around the edges and wound up making different sizes, which you know, if I could control Z reality, I'd probably sort of go back in time and change those. Um, but other than that, I think it's cool. I really like it. Um, the whole point of this video was to demonstrate using the golden ratio in artistic composition, and I'm not sure how successful I've been at doing that. Um, but I think it's probably been more an exercise in showing what a controlled crash and it tailors artistic processes. But um, <clears throat> the average radius, average length of the stamens compared to the radius of the flower is the golden ratio and the radius of the blob in the middle compared to the stamens is as well. Um, the height of that hill compared to the height of the whole frame is and the height of the little hill compared to the big hill is as well. Um, I think that compared to the width of the thing, I think that's the golden ratio plus the golden ratio divided by two, but I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> 
Um, I, mean, I, I tried to make that one the golden ratio compared to the height of this, but it just didn't look right. Um, and these three hills are, are quadratic equations, they're like x squared plus 2x plus whatever. Um, and I think if there is a, a golden ratio relationship between them, it's probably buried in the, the formula itself somewhere rather than just being the heights. Um, but I wouldn't count on it, but you know, that's what I think. Um, and the whole thing's quite mathematical. Um, there's three quadratic equations and everything else is just circles and straight lines. So um, if I started to lose my mind, then I could probably generate the whole thing in about 15 lines of computer code. Um, might do that actually. Um, yeah. Anyway, there you go. Um, I hope you found that as entertaining as I did. <laughs>